Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining our mini live lesson this this week. But today, it's all about fair trade. So today's lesson is called A Fair Trade Nation. We're going to be learning about what fair trade means and how fair trade benefits the people who grow and make the things that we buy here in Scotland and what it means for Scotland to be or become a fair trade nation. And today I'm really pleased to welcome Catherine Newman and Kira Wilkins, and they're joining us from the Scottish Fair Trade Forum. Welcome both. Thank you very much. We're glad to be here. I'm just going to share my presentation. Wonderful. So excited to have you here with us today because I know a lot of uh, pupils joining us today will know a little bit about fair trade, but perhaps not be as familiar with how it works or what it means for the people who it's meant to be helping. So this is very exciting. Thank you. Great. So we'll, we'll get away. going. Yeah. Um, so good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Um, as Katrina said, I am Catherine Newman from the Scottish Fair Trade Forum. And to get us started, can I please ask you in your classes to put your hand up if you know that Scotland is a fair trade nation? So if you put your hand up, if you know that Scotland is a fair trade country or nation. Great, I can see um, a little hand up here. Um, so hopefully there's a few more hands up in classes. But if you didn't know, hopefully by the end of our session this afternoon, you, you will know and you'll know a little bit more about what that means, a little bit more about fair trade and what you can do as a Scottish citizen in our fair trade nation. So the Scottish Fair Trade Forum was set up a number of years ago to work with lots of people across Scotland with the support of the Scottish Government to work towards becoming a fair trade nation. So we first achieved this in 2013, so a long time ago, and it was renewed again in 2017. And then this year is another important year because at the Scottish Fair Trade Forum, we're hoping to renew Scotland's status again this year as a fair trade nation and more of um, more about that later. So teachers, please feel free if you'd like to type your answers into the chat because there's a question coming up and I'm joined by my colleague Kira this afternoon, who's going to introduce herself just now. Hello, thanks for having me. I'm the Development Officer at Scottish Fair Trade Forum. And as Catherine said, I'll be overseeing the chat. So looking forward to seeing your contributions. Thank you. Thanks, Kira. OK, so have you ever noticed anything that is fair trade? So products or logos or maybe signs anywhere? Um, and perhaps you could say what and where? If you take a, a wee minute to pop those answers in the chat and Kira, if if you could let us know what's coming in. So that's if you've ever noticed any fair trade products or logos or signs. Yeah, we've got some good ones already. Things like coffee in supermarkets, bananas, tea. Absolutely brilliant. Great. Oh, brownies as well. Yeah, I suppose on baked goods, you're starting to see it more. Excellent. OK, so those can keep coming in. Thanks for the input there. And we'll move on to the next slide. So. The Scottish Fair Trade Forum is a charity and as you'll know, charities are set up to deal with certain causes, issues, problems. And the issue that we're dealing with is that the world needs a change. So the global goals that you see here or sustainable development goals are aimed about bringing about that change or transformation. So ending global poverty, climate change and inequality. And these are our goals. All of us as global citizens are working towards these. 
And fair trade is about making a global change through producing responsibly and buying responsibly. So um, definitely in line with goal number 12 there. OK. So fair trade is a way of dealing with the statement on this slide. And these feel like um, it's a bit of a big statement and we might not feel part of it, but we are involved in global trade and business every day because everything that we buy um, usually comes from somewhere that is not um, Scotland. So global business and trade, what is it? So global trade is the import and the export of goods and services across countries. And the system for delivering goods and services is called the economy. So that's just some of the terminology. But not all countries have the same resources and the ability to sell to people around the world. And if you're a richer country, you're able to develop more products to sell or to export. But the idea is, though, that economic growth should create greater opportunities for everyone and not just for some people. It should reduce inequalities around the world, raise basic living standards and should promote the sustainable management of our natural resources and ecosystems. And we know that so many people in the world still live in extreme poverty and that the climate crisis is real. So the current global economic system is not working for all people or for the planet. So let's look at this a little bit more closely. So I've only picked a few, but there are thousands of very rural communities around the world growing our food or making other products, but they still don't make enough money to meet their basic needs, the needs of their families or their communities. So many farmers around the world grow crops just for their own family's consumption or to sell locally. They're often unable to sell their crops to other countries due either to the requirements of people who buy the products or just having access or being able to find people to buy their products. So in lots of examples, because they're so rural, they might not have the roads or the transport systems or the vehicles that are required to transport their crops in the example of farming. When farmers do have access to buyers, sometimes they can be tricked into selling their crops for less. So when it comes especially to farm produce, the price that is paid is based on weight, but if the, the scales are not working properly, then um, a farmer can end up being paid less than they should for their products. Another um, aspect in play is changing market prices, um, which means that crops can be worth less one day and more the other. So it would depend when you were selling your produce. But due to their circumstances, many of these farmers often have to accept the low price that they're offered just to make ends meet. And often they don't even cover the costs of producing the crops in the first place, let alone having a decent income. And on top of that, droughts and floods caused by climate change damage the farms too. They can wipe out harvests, leaving the farmers with no food and nothing to sell to make any money. There's also no funds to repair the damage caused by the floods. Also, in such rural places, there are very few other opportunities for work. And also, many younger people, especially in farming communities, are moving elsewhere to try to make a living, which is a real problem if you think about who will grow our food if there are fewer farmers in the future. So this gives you a little bit of an idea that global business and trade doesn't work for everyone. OK, so fair trade was started back in around about the 1960s as a way to support these skilled and hardworking people with products to sell to help them find 
people to buy the products, the food and other quality products, but fairly, ethically and sustainably. So no tricking involved and the payment of a fair price for the products that are bought. So and it's, it's seen as an alternative way of doing global business and trade that cares about people, especially the most marginalised people. That's people who face the greatest barriers around the world and caring for the planet. So here is an example for you. There is a company, it's based in Orkney called Gogo Olive, and they employ talented women in Zimbabwe, an African country, to make these beautiful animal toys that you see in the picture here. The women have a job where they might otherwise not be able to find one. They are paid a good wage and they're supported in lots of other ways by Gogo Olive. And Gogo Olive then sell the products on their website so people around the world can buy them and also find shops that will buy the products. And the photo here is from the One World shop in Edinburgh that stocks a lot of fair trade items. So the people who buy these products like this, like these animals, the, the toys you can see in the picture, are uh, care about the people who made them and they care that those people are benefiting from their work. Okay, let's watch uh, an animation next. Scotland is a fair trade nation. This means we are dedicated to tackling inequalities in global trade. Too many farmers and workers are not paid a fair price for their work or produce. They work in dangerous conditions, they are denied access to markets, and they are on the front line of the climate crisis. But in Scotland, we can help drive a fairer, more sustainable economy. By choosing fair trade, we can help support farmers and workers as they improve their lives and their communities. There are two easy ways to make sure you are buying fair trade. One, the World Fair Trade Organisation product label. If a product has this label, it's been produced by a fully verified social enterprise. These suppliers practice the 10 principles of fair trade throughout their supply chain. Two, the Fair Trade Mark. This is a registered certification mark owned and licensed by Fair Trade International. The mark is only given to products that meet internationally agreed social, environmental and economic fair trade standards. The fair trade movement helps fight rising poverty and inequality. It supports people and the planet and is helping to make the UN's sustainable development goals a reality. Let's keep Scotland at the forefront of this global movement. Find out more about our fair trade nation buy fair trade and join the network at scottishfairtradeforum.org.uk Okay, so that was a bit of a summary of what we've covered so far, but perhaps teachers would like to pop um, any answers to this question in the chat. So have you learned anything so far? Just give you a couple of seconds to do that if you'd like to. OK, so let's move on. So what is a fair trade nation? OK, so it's one where People know about fair trade, and that's part of what we're doing today, that there's lots of activity going on across the country to support fair trade, like campaigning for fair trade, and we'll cover some of this soon, that we are able to choose fair trade products if we'd like to, and that the Scottish Government and Scottish Parliament support fair trade. And we're very lucky in Scotland because the Scottish Government sees fair trade as a really important part of our commitment 
as a good global citizen. So Scotland is looking at all of this again this year to hopefully renew our status and commitment to fair trade. But let's look at some of this in a little bit more detail. So has anyone ever noticed any fair trade signs? You might have one in your village or your town or city. So these signs mean that there's a group of people in that area or community who work together to keep fair trade fresh in people's minds. So helping with Scotland's commitment to fair trade. It's this group of people who would get in touch with the local council and the people who deal with road signs to get permission to have a fair trade sign. But they also do a, a variety of other things to support fair trade. These groups, they tend to be far, part of the Fair Trade Foundations community scheme. So this gives a community, a village, a town or a city, an award as a fair trade community. And road signs would only be a tiny part of what a fair trade community gets involved with. They run competitions, they speak in schools and at other events. They share important fair trade content on social media. They involve local places of worship. They ask local businesses to consider stocking fair trade items. And they might also themselves sell fair trade items at stalls and lots more. The Fair Trade Foundation, so they are the organisation who run Fair Trade Fortnite. They also have a number of other schemes to be involved in. So um, places of worship can be involved in a scheme. A university or college can also sign up where they can work with other colleges and universities um, on fair trade. And there's also the Fair Trade Schools program, uh, school awards, which some of you may be part of. So currently in Scotland, and this is just the ones that are involved in these schemes, there's lots of other communities and schools and faith groups just doing their own thing, but there are 31 communities. 163 schools, 54 faith groups, and at the Scottish Fair Trade Forum, we have 164 members, all um, part of, of our network. OK, but much of this involves facts and figures, and they don't necessarily help people understand what fair trade is about. So if you were telling your friends or your family about fair trade, it would perhaps be interesting to tell them that Scotland is a fair trade nation or why fair trade came about, some stories. But the best way to learn about fair trade is to listen to fair trade producers. And storytelling is a great way to gain a better understanding of an issue or a situation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to watch a short film. It's about three minutes long. It's called The Guardians of the Rainforest. And it's a story told by Bessie about his community in Sierra Leone that grows cocoa. While you're uh, listening, watching the film, if you're able to take some notes, so if you get your pens and pencils ready, you could note down if you hear an issue or a problem a cause, an effect of the issue or problem, and any solutions. So don't worry if you don't get them all, because together um, I'm sure we'll be able to populate our issue tree, which is on the Jamboard. If you're not able to access the Jamboard, although I can see that many of you are on there, but if you're not able to, if you pop in the chat issue, followed by the issue you've identified, cause, followed by the cause, effect, and so on. Kira will be able to pick some of them up and we can add them to the issue tree, tree while we're going or, or afterwards. OK, so I hope it's clear what we're going to do. So I'm going to play the film and then I'm going to unshare and I'm going to bring our Jamboard up and we can start populating that with the issues, the causes, effects and solutions.
So let's go with watching the film. Hi, my name is Bese. Welcome to Sierra Leone. I live in a small town called Gorahun. Gorahun is near a great forest called the Gola Rainforest. Once, forests like this covered the whole country. But now there are only a few left. They are at risk from logging, mining, and farming. In my community, we know that the rainforest is important to the whole world. We want to protect it. But it is not easy to do that when you have to make tough choices to survive. Life is difficult for many people who live in Sierra Leone. Many people do not earn enough money to meet their basic needs and it can be difficult to access education or medical care. You must learn that some matter in school. Two to two, my half class one, class two. But you can't put that on the table. Secondary school can be very expensive, as children often need to travel to other towns, and we have to pay for their food and accommodation. Almost no one from our community can afford college or university. My parents are members of a group of cocoa farmers called Gole Gobu, which means we who live at the forest edge. We were supported by the RSPB, Comic Relief and Divine Chocolate, to come together as a fair trade cooperative to improve our own lives and protect the rainforest. Life is getting better now that my parents are part of Gole Gobu. Everyone in Gole Gobu looks after their farm in a way that will increase their income without harming the rainforest. We call it forest friendly farming, which means working together, farming sustainably, and protecting the rainforest and the animals that live in it. This is a cocoa pod. It is the fruit of the cocoa tree. The pods are cracked open and the beans are put into a basket to ferment. After the beans have fermented, they are laid out on a table to dry in the sun. Now the beans are ready to sell. Sometimes the farmer has to walk several hours to get to the collection point. Eventually, it will be shipped overseas and made into chocolate. After we sell the cocoa, we receive a fiat trade premium. The extra sum of money we get for selling on fiat terms. It is for the whole community. We have a committee where we decide how we will spend the money. The cocoa farmers of Gole Gobu have come together to protect the forest while earning a decent living through fair trade. If we all work together, we can save it. That short film was from the Fair Trade Foundation, and there's actually a longer version available, um, which we can provide the link to as well. So I am going to now share the Jamboard. Okay. So I hope you can all see this. Um, so what we would do is down the left hand side, I hope you can see that I'm hovering over a sticky note. So you would click on there and type your solution, your effect, your issue or your causes. And then you would position it in the area on the tree. And hopefully together we'll, we'll find some of these um, 
So just down the left hand side where there's a little sticky note with um, it's a little square with some lines on it. I'm just going to do one to show you just now. And then you can move the oops. OK. So we're going to have about five minutes. To let you um, add to the issue tree. And if you're having trouble with the Jamboard, please um, pop your answers in the chat and we can add them either just now or afterwards because we can share the final picture with you after the session. Great, I can see lots, lots of sticky notes being added. Here we can see down at the bottom some of the causes. Rainforests being destroyed. Not enough money. Farmers not being paid enough. Only a few rainforests left. Gosh, we've got lots, so I, I've got a job to do afterwards to to sort them into the different areas before we can share it with you. This is excellent. Thank you for all of this input. I'll just give you a couple of minutes to keep adding. This is brilliant, everyone. Wow. This is great. So you can keep adding. And um, as I said, I will sort these out and um, share it with the team and it can be shared afterwards. So that's excellent. So let's um, go back to uh, the next part of the presentation. So we heard a bit of a focus in the film on protecting the environment. And this is just one aspect of fair trade. So um, when a farming cooperative is certified fair trade, they have to follow or meet certain standards in terms of caring for the environment. And some of those include reforestation projects to store carbon, not allowing the use of harmful chemicals on the farms, growing trees and crops together, which is better for biodiversity. They have climate adaptation training, so how to deal with the impact of floods or droughts on their farms, wildlife conservation projects, reducing water usage and switching to green energy fuels. And that's just some of the things that they do to take care of the environment. So a good place to start when researching fair trade 
is the 10 principles of fair trade. And this is the, the second way in the animation that we watched earlier, um, the second mark of fair trade. So um, it's the World Fair Trade Organization's 10 principles of fair trade, different to the fair trade mark that we might all be a little bit more familiar with. But there's 10 principles. And as you can see, number 10 is all about climate action and protecting the environment. So um, fair trade businesses who are verified by the World Fair Trade Organization, they have to follow these 10 principles. And so uh, protecting the environment is key. So hopefully you can see how fair trade puts people and the planet first. Fair trade producers are acting responsibly and consumers or people who buy or choose fair trade are doing the same. And if we remember back to goal number 12, responsible consumption and production, hopefully it's a little bit clearer um, where fair trade supports goal 12. However, it's not all about buying. At the Scottish Fair Trade Forum, we campaign for fair trade. We know that fair trade offers a way of doing business and trade that is just or fair and sustainable. And you can become a campaigner too. So we have a toolkit for our campaigners to help you. And Kira's going to pop the link in the chat. It's not just for schools, but there are some really good pointers in the toolkit on how to campaign for fair trade. And here is an example of campaigning in action. So last year, uh, we had the 10th anniversary of Scotland as a fair trade nation. So the Scottish Fair Trade Forum held an event in the Scottish Parliament to speak to MSPs about the importance of Scotland being a fair trade nation and the importance of fair trade for farmers and workers around the world. And these pupils who were primary six last year, they came al along and they spoke to MSPs as well about how important to children in countries around the world fair trade is. They then went on to write to their local MSP to ask them to support fair trade because we have a pledge at the Scottish Fair Trade Forum for MSPs to sign. So when an MSP signs it, they are signing to take action to promote Scotland's fair trade nation status to listen to the voices of producers and to support the buying of fair trade products through public procurement, so public buying. Currently, we have 65 MSPs who have signed the pledge and we're delighted with that, but we'd like to increase that number. I would like to get to 129 and we're going to share that link. And yeah, I think it would be absolutely amazing if you were able to tell your MSP that you know that Scotland is a fair trade nation and that fair trade supports the global goals and that you care about fair trade because MSPs represent us and they support the issues that we care about. So it'd be a great action from today's session um, to increase the number of MSPs who have signed the pledge and we will have a link available for you to find out more about how to go about that. So it's just left for me to say thank you very much for listening and for joining us today. I hope that you have found out a little bit more about Scotland being a fair trade nation and about fair trade in general. And if you have any questions, I'm not sure if we've maybe got time for a couple. Thank you. That was great. Thank you so much. Um, I think we do have time for a few questions. If you'd like to pop them in the chat, that would be brilliant. Um, thank you to everyone who contributed to the Jamboard and, and contributed to the discussion that was going on there. Uh, it was good to see some of the answers that you were sharing about what you learned from the video. Um, just waiting to see if anyone has. Oh, there are some questions coming in, so I'll let you answer those. And then I've got a wee something to share with you afterwards. Yeah, so 
I see this question, are there any other countries? So Wales is the other fair trade nation and um, they became a fair trade nation five years before Scotland and both Scotland and Wales are partnering up together uh, this year to both renew our status as fair trade nations. Um, and we've produced a set of criteria this year that will work for lots of different countries. So we hope in the future other countries will follow us and commit to being fair trade nations as well. Are most EU countries fair trade? So the only two fair trade nations are Wales and Scotland so far, but let's hope that other na nations will become fair trade nations too. That would be great. And that's definitely something that we should be proud of really that we've taken those those steps and it'd be good to see other other nations follow suit as well absolutely i don't think i've missed any questions kira i don't I? think so no okay no i think you've got them all okay yes. Well, while everybody is maybe thinking of any other questions they might have, I wanted to share this with everyone. Now, if you are participating in EcoSchools, you'll recognize what this is. This is an EcoSchools action plan. It's just an example of some of the things that you could participate in if you were choosing fair trade or global citizenship as one of your topics. Um, like Catherine said, the um, looking on the Scottish Fair Trade Forum website to see if your MSP is one of the ones that has signed the Fair Trade Pledge. And if not, writing to them to ask why not and encourage them to do so would definitely be something that you could do. Um, and you could see if your school is a Fair Trade School. I know a couple schools joining us today are on their way up the Fair Trade Schools Awards ladder. So that's brilliant. Um, but if you haven't started that yet, that's something that you could look at. Remember too that um, any fair trade school awards that your school gets, you can count as evidence towards your eco schools green flag if that's something else that you're going going uh, towards. And even if not, some of these things are good things to participate in anyway, just in um, in terms of learning more about fair trade. Uh, there's some other ideas there, just little ones like check with your head teacher if your staff room can use fair trade tea or coffee. I'm sure your teachers would all appreciate that. And you could support the Scottish Fair Trade Forum by becoming a fair trade finder. And there's more information about how to do that in the resource folder um, in this document here that we will share with everyone. Even if you haven't got a green flag award yet, these are some things that you might find useful and interesting to participate in. Um, Catherine and Kira, I'd like to thank you so much. You've gone away, but I'd like to thank you so much for your time today um, and for sharing all that you, the work that you do and sharing all your knowledge about fair trade and what we can help to do to keep, keep that going further and keep fair trade in our own everyday lives as well. I really appreciate you coming to join our live lesson today. Well, thank and you very thank much you. for having us. Thank you. No, oh, absolutely. And thank you too to all the teachers and pupils who were able to join us today. I hope that you will be joining us for any other live lessons that we have coming up in the future. If you have enjoyed today's lesson, we would love to hear from you. Uh, you can find us on, on most social media platforms at KSP Scotland, and we always like to hear from you. Say a quick hello or show us the work that you're doing relating to our lessons. We always love to hear from you. And of course, if you have any other questions that didn't get answered today, you can always send them to us at ecoschools at keepscotlandbeautiful.org and we'll pass them on to Kira and Catherine and see if we can get an answer for you. These on the screen just now are our upcoming live lessons. We've got Spring Clean Week, which is one of my favourites, and we've got Gaelic and Climate Justice, which is something brand new for us, and Natural Scotland Week coming up in May. So I hope you'll be able to join us. For those, you can sign up on our website as you have done for this one. Thank you once again for joining us today. That is all we have time for today. So bye for now. Thank you. Bye, everyone.